Hi friends, this is Seth of the Cygnus LPs, and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. In this episode, apparently we're going to do something with our hand in front of our nose. I don't know. So yes, as you can see, this is the warp room. This is where we will begin our LP. This is where we will end our LP. This is where we will do most of everything in between except the levels, which are found in the warp room. This is a chamber. This is the first chamber. This is the Earth chamber, and it has five levels, like every other chamber. So without further ado, I guess we can just jump on into this chamber where the portal will fall from the sky and just eat us up, basically. So yeah. What are you looking at, fuzzhead? You. I'm Rocco, the Earth Elemental. Don't care. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex woke me from my captive slumber, and now I'm free to pulverize whatever gets in my way. Oh, don't even think about collecting those crystals, bro. Too late. I'm gonna bury you alive. Oh. Okay, he, he, he's... Did he say he's gonna burn me alive? I think he said burrow. I, I, I don't know. So he's gonna burrow me alive. He's basically gonna dig a hole and then shove me in it and then close the hole. But little does he know, I will have a straw and I'll still be breathing and I'll come back and haunt him forever or something like that. Anyways, so let's just break this box here and continue on. Yes, this is Arctic Antics. I guess I should explain a bit. Um, uh... Yeah, every level has a power crystal, which is what we need to lock away the elementals, as we've seen in the last part. And they also have gems. Now, most levels have one gem that requires breaking all the boxes, including those uh, TNTs, so you have to jump on those TNTs. Those TNTs will have a three second timer after you jump on them, then they'll blow up. But if you attack them, they'll blow up right away. And attacking is spinning, by the way. B is spin. I'm using a game. This is the GameCube version, so sorry if the controls are different for you because you use the PlayStation version of this game. But I'm used to the GameCube version. B is spin, A is jump. Typical GameCube controls, really. And yeah, so our goal right now is I'm going to try to get through all these levels. And I'm going to try to get all the boxes in the levels. As you can see, if you press Y, you get this menu up here. Menu, not a menu, but you know what I mean. And it gives you your stat... Stay down, you stupid menu thing, Majigger. I guess it's mad that I keep calling it a menu, so I'm just going to keep spamming Y. Anyway, so yeah, as you can see, it says 19 on 147 boxes. You need to get all the boxes in the level to get the clear gem. That's basically what we're going for here. So to do this, you have to basically break every box in your path. By the way, these boxes are breakable by, um, you know, doing this. Bam! Ha! Huh? We belly flopped on a boxes, and apparently that's enough to break it, even though spinning at high speeds was not enough. So, yes, that makes sense, apparently. And that's how it's gonna happen, so we just gotta basically break the boxes. I'm going to get the power crystal and the, uh gem, the clear gem, which you get for breaking all the boxes. I'm gonna try to get them all in every playthrough of the level, then I'm gonna go back for the relic, which we'll get into later. So yeah, this is the nice little snowy place that is the, um, uh, what's it called? Arctic Antics is the name of the stage. They, they have pretty creative names for the stages in this game. Probably much like every Crash game. And basically, we're just breaking boxes. That's gonna be what we're doing most of this LP. So here we have this penguin, and th this is kind of what makes this game a little... Ugh, th just this concept. Look, this penguin's not doing anything. We're just gonna walk into it. Hi, buddy. Oops, we got hurt. You didn't see me get hurt, but we have a mask right now. His name is Aku... Aku... Aku yeah, it's Aku Aku. That's the name of the mask that's following us right now. And that's basically like, uh... I, I don't know how you call that. It's not an extra live. It's it's basically like uh, imagine you have hearts in Zelda. Your first heart would just be you. The second heart would be the mask. The third heart would be the glowing mask. And the random Mario star that's in the Zelda game for no apparent reason would be your. Well, let's just say after you get the third Aku Aku, something very interesting happens. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of tired of explaining the game now, so I'm just gonna go play. There, there's a nice little mammoth over there being all, Hey, I'm a mammoth! And I'm like, dude, I know. So, as you can see, I kind of screwed up and broke a box here. If you ever have a box that's just a bit too high for you, you can jump and then use your belly slam by pressing X mid-jump, and that's how you're gonna be able to break them. And, what's this? A bonus level? Oh, no, it's, it's not a bonus level. What are you talking about? It's just a platform that conveniently has a question mark drawn on it. Stop being silly. 
And stop being frozen, Crash. Cold people are very bad at playing video games-ish, even though I'm the one playing the video game and you're the one doing what I command you because I have the controller, muahahaha. So yes, this is a bonus level, basically. You have to get all the boxes in the bonus levels as well if you want the clear gem. So I'm just telling you that right now. So don't think that you can just neglect the boxes in this place. You can't. You have to get them all because it counts towards the end counter of boxes and whatnot. So you're going to want to do that. And for some reason they have like... Excuse me, there's apparently a box there. I didn't even know that, but I was just getting stuck there for some reason. So yes, all throughout this little bonus stage, one thing that... It, it doesn't particularly get in the way, but it's kind of odd. They just keep that bonus. You see, like, the letters spelling out bonus every two seconds? Yeah, they just do that for some reason. I don't really get why, because, I mean, all it's doing is kind of getting in your way. I mean, they could do it once, but I don't know. Whatever, so, uh, yeah, that mammoth is... Well, we'll get into that mammoth later. There's something pretty interesting about that mammoth. And this is a death stage. Um, I'm not going to do all the death... Uh, I should not have done that. You know what, I think I'm going to kill myself. But just to give you a sneak peek of what is going to come up later... Lots of nitro! Yes! And this is a waste of a Aku Aku, but whatever. I felt like letting my eyeballs fall to the ground. That's pretty gruesome, anyways. Be right... Well, why be right back? I'm right there, anyways. Yeah, I might have... Did I forget to break these on the first run? I'm not sure. But anyways, yeah. We're not that far back, and I just felt like showing off the death stage there for some reason. I'm gonna do the death stages later for, uh, just to explain those death stages are... Th those platforms that lead you to the death stage, I should say, will appear if you do not die. So, uh, if you can make through the level, make it through the level without dying on your first run, you can get to that death stage, and then in the death stage, well, we'll, we'll get into that later, like I said, but, uh, yeah, something interesting. Here we have the power crystal. Yay, that was easy. It actually kind of was. So, uh, aside from that, we're basically done. As you can see, um, over there, well, you probably can't see that. I'm not sure how great quality the resolution is on this video. But right here, you see 106 on 147, just like it says up there, 106 on 147. So, as you can see, we're missing quite a few boxes, but you might say, but you didn't actually miss any boxes. Well, this is where this thing comes in. This green box here, spin it, it'll destroy all the nitros in the level. The nitros are the green boxes that say nitro on it, obviously. And essentially, what they do is, they're like TNTs, except you can't even jump on them. They just explode as soon as you touch them in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, that's pretty good. We've got this, and we've got the Boxing Day Diamond. That's probably what I'm going to call them throughout the rest of this LP. I like calling them that. It's an interesting name, and I mean, that, that's basically what's happening there. You're just breaking boxes, so why not? We, we got these diamonds on Boxing Day, haha. -ha. Anyways, so now we're going back into level. You might ask, why would you go back into this boring old level full of icy penguins that kill you for no apparent reason, even though you just kind of touch them? Well, that's a good question. And that is because there is something called a time trial. Yes. Uh, these loading screens. I hate these loading screens. I'm going to have to cut them out later on in the LP. They're pretty annoying. But yeah, so as you can see here, we have this clock here that wasn't there before. After you get the power crystal in the level, this clock will appear. Grab the clock, and this will happen. And essentially, that's what's happening. You have this timer down there. The timer raises every so often. And why am I doing this? See, I, that, that is a perfect prime example of what not to do in a time trial. You do not go for the boxes. The boxes are impertinent. You already got the freaking Boxing Day diamond. Well, at least you, you might have got it. I mean, you might not. You might be doing a Power Crystal only run or whatever floats your rubber duck. But anyways, that's what's happening right here. As you can see, the timer's going up. We want to destroy these yellow boxes because those yellow boxes stop the timer. So you see this little box has a 2 on it, that means it stops the timer for 2 seconds, that's 2 seconds less on your time. You want to race through this level, you, you don't want to stop at all, that's the trick to these time trials, you never stop, you just keep running, keep jumping, do whatever, just do not stop. If you stop, then that's, well, you're probably going to fail. I'm sorry if I'm making, like, if I'm not acting, yeah, just because my commentary is probably lacking in this one, but this is basically kind of my equivalent to tutorial level, because I got to kind of... Explain how the game works for the viewers who haven't played this game for some reason. I'd hope you've played this game. I like this game, personally. It's probably... Well, it's actually, to be perfectly honest, one of the only Crash games I've played. And it's one of my favorites. Um, that's the thing. Those boxes I just got there... 
Sometimes you gotta use your judgment as to what boxes you wanna get in a time trial, because some of the boxes are out of the way and you waste more time getting them than they save. Um, it's always a good idea to hit that um, nitro killing box anyways, because sometimes the nitros will be beside a yellow box and will stop the time. But anyways, yes, so there we got it. We got a... Uh, as you can see, that is a relic right there, the thing under, over the name. I'm just gonna write a name. Um, American Applesauce Association, why not? They, they, they are good at doing the time trials, apparently. So yeah, and we got a relic. This relic we got will be of a blue tint. There are three types of relics. There's the sapphire relic, the gold relic, and the, uh, platinum relic, if I'm not mistaken. And they go in that order. We got a sapphire relic, so that means we just did okay. We didn't do abundantly good. And on there, it tells you how you can get a better rank. So if we went back and did the time trial in 50 seconds, then we'd have a better rank. We'd have either a gold or a platinum relic. That's essentially what's going on there. As you can see, we're missing a gem. Once again, I'm not going to go into this. I'm just going to do the basics for now. And we're going to continue that later. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to finish off this episode with this one last level. And this one last level is very special. Because you're driving a blimp? No, you're driving a... I don't even know what this classifies as. It's obviously an airplane, but yeah. So basically you hold A, it shoots. This is uh, one of these unique levels in this game. It's not really unique. Crash has been doing this for a while, but... You essentially have um, uh, vehicles in this game, and as you can see, we are driving a plane. In this one, the health system is changed a bit. Instead of... Uh, ooga Ooga! Boom Boom! who is going to help you uh, not die, you have a percentage of health, which is the uh, health of your vehicle. If that goes to zero, well, you die. And that's the thing. Basically, what we have to go around... I'm not sure if they made it abundantly clear, but I guess I was just talking... Ow! Yeah, the enemies will just go and kamikaze you like that. It's really annoying. They'll just go like, Geronimo! And explode on you, and... I, I don't know, I guess they're just dumb terrorists. But anyways, that's what's gonna happen there. It's pretty annoying, and you're gonna want to keep your health up. But how do I keep my health up, you ask, while I'm destroying these machines that are creating tornadoes? Because that's obviously what you have to do. I mean, like, as soon as you see a machine creating a tornado, you're like, Oh, gotta kill it with my super awesome lasers from my super awesome plane. No, not really, but anyways, yeah, so... As you can see, I destroyed five of the six machines. These, um, uh, cra these, uh, balloons, I suppose is what you'd call them. They're more like crates on parachutes, but yeah. The boxes on parachutes slash boxes, box balloons, boxing balloons, yes, these balloons are balloons that are used by boxers to, uh, get very high in the sky like a ufig plant. But anyways, we're just gonna destroy all these boxes. Destroy the balloons or the box, it doesn't matter, because if you destroy the balloons, then the box will fall to its doom. And it, it'll, it'll die anyways, because, you know, you can kill boxes, they totally have a, uh, a mind of their own. They, they 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 have a they have a brain and they have a soul and we can kill them because we are evil. We're just as evil as Kirby when we're in crash form and we like to kill boxes for no apparent reason. But yeah, as you can see, I destroyed all the boxes there and it got me the Boxing Day Diamond. So now I can go and kill the uh, last of the Turner things. That's the best name I have for them apparently. Destroy them all, you'll get the Power Crystal. And that is basically it. Uh, yeah, sorry if this episode was kind of just very tutorial-oriented. I'll try to get into the good commentary later, but like I said, that's really all that's happening at the beginning of the game, is you're learning what to do, and I'm just gonna show you guys how to do that, so... Now that that's done... Yeah, that's, that, that was a pretty productive first episode, and in the next episode, we will do the time trial of that balloon mission. And yeah, so we will do that, and until then, Crash Bandicoot is going to stand around doing absolutely nothing useful with his little mask going, Dude, why the hell aren't you doing anything? We have like a world to save from evil masks that do things to nature, because that's how masks work. Yeah.